Hello friends, welcome to this amazing video by Financial Literacy. I am Nupur and in this video I will be covering the topic Capital Asset Pricing Model often called CAPM for short. CAPM as we all know is an investment theory that shows the relationship between the expected return of investment and market risk. To better understand CAPM, I think it will be easier if we look at an example and how it can be used. This is the formula for CAPM and if you are of maths persuasion then perhaps this formula makes a lot of sense. But for the rest of us, let's break it down to try to make it simpler. So there are only three inputs that go into CAPM. First is the risk free rate. We are going to use the 10 year treasury note and as of now it's January 2021. The 10 year treasury note is about 3%. Next we have beta. Beta looks at the relationship between our investment and the market. For our example we use a stock. So for us beta looks at how the stock moves compared to how the stock market moves. The market by definition gets beta of 1. So let's use Apple stock as an actual example. So Apple's beta is 0 0.99 and this is mighty close to 1. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that Apple stock acts very similar to the market. So if the market is up 1%, then Apple stock will be up almost 1%. More exactly, it should be up about 0.99%. Same is true on the downside. The market goes down, Apple stock will be down, just short of 1%. And just to see how this impacts, let's throw a second stock in there. Right now, Facebook has a beta of 1.2. So, if the market moves up or down 1%, Facebook will move up or down 1.2%. The closer the beta is to 1%, the more the stock moves like the market does. The final input in our formula is the expected return of the stock market. Now coming up with this number isn't always clear. Some research companies publish what they expect long term market returns to be. We can also use a historical average. For our case, we are going to use the average of the past 10 years, which is about 9% per year. Okay. So now we have all our inputs. Our risk-free rate is 3%, beta for Apple is 0.99 and for Facebook it's 1.2 and then we have the expected market return of 9%. Okay? So let's plug these numbers in. So RF is the risk-free rate. So here we could plug in 3%. And the symbol here, this is the Greek symbol for beta. For Apple, we can replace this beta with 0.99 and we could put Facebook's formula down here and there we will put 1.2. Then in the parenthesis, we have the expected market return minus the risk-free rate. They call this the market premium. For the expected market return, we are using 9% and for the risk-free rate, it's the same as the 3% that we were using over here. Now, for those who are interested, the horizontal bar that's above the R right here and here, well, that bar indicates that this is an estimate. So now we know we are using an estimate of expected market return and that will give us an estimate of the return of this asset. That's what the lowercase a stands for. And over here, N that stand for the market. So when we calculate these, we end up with 8.9% for Apple and 10.2% for Facebook. Now, don't forget, the only difference between Apple's formula and Facebook's formula is their individual beta. So, how can this be used? Well, one way you can use CAPM is to use it in calculating the VAC of a company. VAC, VAC is a short for Weighted Average Cost of Capital. And that VAC can be used as a discount factor to value a stock in something like discounted cash flow. Now technically for VAC you would use both the cost of debt and the cost of equity. CAPM can be used as a cost of equity. So 
For a quick illustration as to how it can be used, let's imagine that Apple and Facebook have no debt, which means that WAC for both of them is same as CAPM. Let's see how that would play out. Let's imagine that we had an expected cash flow coming from Apple in two years. And let's imagine that it's going to be around $1000. Well, since cash is more valuable than it is in let's say the two years, what we can do is use the results of a CPM calculation as a discount factor. So if I'm gonna get $1000 in two years, for Apple using our CAPM result of 8.94%, we can use that as a discount factor. And we can see that $1000 in two years is worth $842.61 today. For Facebook, if we are also expecting $1000 in two years, that would be worth $823.43 today. So, in theory, that's the present value of your future cash flow expectations. What you want to do is pay less than that today. And if your expectations are correct, the bigger the gap between what you pay today and your calculated present value, the bigger your returns will be. Now, CAPM isn't the only way to calculate a discount rate or an expected rate of return. There is also something called the arbitrage pricing theory that's quite popular. There are also a few multi-factor models at work as well. So keep in mind that CAPM is one of the few choices and not the only choices at some point in the future. I'll do similar type of style videos to this on the arbitrage pricing theory and multi-factor models. And if you haven't done so, already hit the subscribe button. I appreciate you staying with the video all the way to the end. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, goodbye.